Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So welcome to a Vortex Flow and Stability in Evos Part 3. And just a side note to the video Part 2, um, I was talking about how we can get these uh, uh, split uh, uh, Evos and uh, they can make these tracks, these kind of like a split spiral tracks here. Well, I just want to draw your attention to another video that um, uh, I produced um, at the beginning of last year. Uh, and this was a whole series of videos to do with the Hestalen lights. And I just want to take you to that blog. It's on our Steemit channel, which is uh, www.steemit.com at MFMP. And the blog is UFOs over Hestalen Norway. Um, uh, explained ball lightning and low energy nuclear reactions. So uh, why I'm showing you this is because this was a large ball lightning here that apparently struck a tree here and it kind of went from a ball to these M&Ms and then it hit another tree here and then it went to bigger M&Ms. So essentially uh, my hypothesis was there was a very large Evo and it came and hit the tree here. It split a little or it split into one part and it produced this uh, kind of uh, track here and then it went over here and uh, uh, did something different over here. So um, uh, there you have it. Uh, this is a very, very large kind of spiraling track, uh, similar to the ones we've got here, this kind of spiraling track here or periodistic period periodicity here. Um, now, your question might be, why are we not seeing the inside? Well, um, that is a question. Um, so uh, get your thinking caps on. Okay, so um, moving on from that, uh, I'm going to kill that and uh, we probably don't need that anymore. So what I want to talk about here is uh, this, which I shared on the 23rd of January 2018, and it's one of the Lion series videos. And I want to use this to illustrate uh, something about the way um, uh, there is flow around the exotic vacuum object of ions. And um, <clears throat> as we've established using the Lion 1 quartz liner, uh, the tube furnace liner, if you have a Evo uh, and it's turning around here and it's kind of flat onto the surface, it's scraping material around and it's passing it onto this one, which is scraping it round. And you can imagine that's just like two of these sections. So it's like this section and this section, if these were rotating in this direction. Yeah. So rotating there and rotating there, it's passing the material there. Now, as I've said before, uh, if we zoom right into this, um, these, uh, if, if they're rotating that way up there, they're kind of rotating this way. But let's say the, the actual uh, um, fine structure here is rotating this way. What happens is it, as, as it's rotating that way, it's also rotating up here and then it kind of passes it on to this one. And then that rotates and it passes it on to this one. And it basically, you actually have this motion that kind of goes around the outside like that. So essentially what you do is you have this spiraling and of course, that will actually take it into the inside. So shall we find an inside frame? So here, so what I've just done is it comes around, it's come around and now it's going on the inside and then it will go round and then it will come back on the outside and then it'll go back on the inside and then it'll go on the outside and then it'll come back on the inside. So this is kind of um, what you'll see uh, for uh, ions that are going around the outside. Now the interesting thing is when, when these were forming, um, the the ring itself, if you can imagine one of these sub rings or this ring, um, they would have had uh, ions trapped around them or trapped around the the fine structure going around this way. So um, you know, as they self assemble, you you end up with ions inside. But the interesting thing is, is that they go in the opposite direction. Of course they do, don't they? So what do I mean by that? Well. Um, uh, if you can imagine that you've got this ring here, and probably I should have done a cross section, but we'll come to that. And you're looking like an x-ray through here. The, this material is going this way, <laughs> but the inside material is going that way. So you have uh, charged particles uh, going in opposite directions in whichever quanta of uh, fractal um, assembly that you have of this structure. So I've done a diagram here. 
uh, to talk about uh, different density mediums and uh, the uh, kind of flow uh, around the uh, individual exotic vacuum object quanta and uh, multiple items. So um, if I just step to the next frame, so what I'm saying here is that the the ions are coming round here and they're going round here and they're going round here. Of course, it's a toroid and I've just done a cross, cross section through the toroid and I'm going to use this notation, this kind of necking uh, to show the kind of uh, dead depth there. So um, then if, if we go to the kind of flow, you've got a lot of material coming in here from the side and it's going out and splaying out and it creates this dome. The reason it's creating the dome is because you've got the same density of material here as you've got a, a, a material here because you're in this gray area over here and you've kind of got like, like this suck coming in at this point. Now, um, if you step that on, uh, the material going around here causes this to tractor in this uh, direction. And as we showed with the, um, uh, let's, let's find that there, if you showed with the, um, the Hutchison uh, fracture sample, not that one. Yeah, as we showed with this, uh, uh, maybe this one, is that a better one? Okay, yeah. So, uh, as we showed with this, um, uh, it kind of went into the surface. So you're going from one, one type of medium, uh, which is less dense, and into uh, aluminium, which is more dense. Now, um, on Bostick's work, on some of the uh, toruses, you can see a kind of cross-axis uh, uh, movement. So we, we've got these scrapings here, which are basically radial. And it, it, you can look at the images that I've shared um, for different lighting, but there's also these kind of translational uh, sleep, uh, sweeps as well. So maybe I can see which one's best for showing that. Uh, not that one. It might be the one I'm just showing you there. Maybe this one. Yeah, this, that's not the best, but uh, maybe I should have dug that up first. Okay, this is quite good. So, I don't know if that's obvious to you there, but you've got this main sweep here, but you've got these kind of side sweeps here. Anyway, my, my point oh, here, you can see it's going at an angle here and here. So, th this, this image is shared or something similar. So, um, uh, you'll be able to look at that in your own time. So, so what I'm saying is that not, not only do you have material transporting like that, or rather like <laughs> bouncing around here, uh, you actually have it going up and round at the same time. So there's a movement this way and a movement that way, and there's a gouging out with the actual fixed kind of rotating, kind of pseudo-rotating larger structure. Okay, so... Um, so that, that's describing the, the small one. So not only have you got the material going through there's also once it's on there it's it, it's kind of coming round the loop as well so that's the ions when you're in the same medium now if I go to the next frame here what I've uh, doing a diagram of here is uh, where I've got a number of rings and you can imagine that this is an extended loop and I'm uh, I'm saying that I want a very large loop but that then comes into here and it's actually going across the um, material boundary. So let's say this is the copper oxide in the lion reactor, and this is the air. And I'm going to go to the next frame. So we have our material going around. And if you have a broken loop at both ends, the material just goes around like this, <laughs> um, which is interesting itself. And, and But what I'm trying to show you here is that if, if you can imagine this was a whole torus, uh, like our torus here, yes, you have material on the outside going round with its helicity, and then you have material on the inside going round with the opposite. I think it's the opposite helicity. Yeah, uh, is that right? Yeah, it's the opposite hel helicity. So um, that's a very, very interesting uh, nature going on there, and bearing in mind those are charged particles. So, um, so anyway, so you've got this going round here, and then what does that mean for material traveling through it? Uh, well, firstly, it's still going to want to track to out. So in the case of the uh, Hutchison sample, 
uh, it's tractoring in, but it kind of gets stuck because it's kind of pushing itself out as well as in. Um, and so it kind of gets stuck halfway. Um, but if it's, uh, if it's emerging, it's got kind of less resistance here and it's pushing back on something that's more dense. So it could come out. And then what does that mean for the material that's in the loop? Let's say this was a complete loop and for whatever reason this got um, some symmetry broken or, or it just got disrupted and this bit broke away. You've then got basically a railgun uh, cannon. And I, this is one of the reasons I called it cannon uh, in uh, early 2018. So uh, the next frame I'm showing you here is this one. And so, uh, and in fact, what I'm showing you here is also the spiraling of the material as it comes through. And it's interesting because we have some detritus from the inside of the Lion reactor, which shows spiraling on, 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 on it. Um, anyway, so, um, so this is spiraling and it basically gets shot out, literally like a railgun. And it's almost like rifling going on here. But anyway, where did we see that? Well, that's what I am showing you here. This is the Lion Reactor, and this is the outside of the Lion Reactor. And I have actually, I think, the GIF anim in Photoshop to show you here. So this is it, uh, and the cannon is here. Uh, and it's shot, this is the North Pole over here, and this is the South Pole. And at the point of everything failing and cooling down and the party's over, it shot these bits of material out, which are totally different elementally. Well, very different elementally. They've got zirconium in them where there's no zirconium anywhere else. Um, uh, and uh, it shot it out. Um, and uh, you can see how the, the cannon, the sort of end of the exotic vacuum object, has kind of... Uh, come out and it's dragged some of the copper oxide with it uh, as it's as it's done that um so yeah so uh, that uh, for me is uh, showing how the uh, exotic vacuum object can transport material eat into material and even eat out of material and uh, ca carrying some with it so uh, I imagine that this occurred almost instantaneously. So what I'll do is when I post this video, I will um, uh, include the links to the relevant uh, videos for the SEM section and uh, a link to the part in the possible irony in Lion. But uh, I think the key takeaway from this is that um, Inside the exotic vacuum object, the material is moving one way. On the outside, it's moving the other way. And its rotation around it is one way uh, on the outside and the other way on the inside. And if they are charged ions, you might like to think how that would play out uh, electromagnetically. So uh, where is that? Yes, so there we go here. So yes. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.